This is an IB higher level video about flux, flux density and flux linkage in the electromagnetism unit 11. Now up to now you may have seen two different ways of talking about magnetic fields and magnetic field strength. So the first one um, is related to the force um, uh, the current the current going through a wire and the force experienced by that wire magnetic field is in there and the length of the wire that is in the magnetic field now we saw this earlier on in in standard level ib um, and that's one way of quantifying the magnetic field strength is f over i l and you can do that by running a wire with some current through that magnetic field and you can see what the force on that wire is at any point and that gives you the magnetic field strength. Now another way of representing magnetic fields we've seen um, even as far as GCSE or maybe even key stage three is field lines in a, in a, in a diagram. So we've got our magnet there and we know that the field lines go from north to south and they look something like this. So there's two different ways of representing magnetic fields, and they don't seem to, to link particularly with, with one another. Now we can see here that there's probably going to be a stronger magnetic field here, where there's lots of field lines, and a weaker magnetic field up here, where there's less field lines. So we've got a weak and strong. Now, one way to think about magnetic flux, flux is kind of like the total amount of magnetic field that you have. So that's one way to think about it. Now, that's not an especially useful and it's not an especially tangible thing to think about on its own. But what you do have is the relationship between how much of that field is located in a particular place and we can introduce another term here called flux density. Now, flux density is a much, much more useful term. Now, flux density is the amount of flux in a particular area. And the flux density, as you can see here, we've got a high flux density here and a low flux density here. There's more field lines per unit area here and less field lines per unit area here. So the flux density is higher here and lower here. So flux density is equivalent to magnetic field strength. So flux density, the amount of flux or the amount of field lines per unit of area is equivalent to the field strength. So flux density is a much more useful property to talk about. And the flux density symbol that we use, that is the symbol for flux divided by the area that it goes through. So flux density is flux, this symbol here, divided by the area that that flux is being measured over. And that leads us on to our first equation in our data booklets, which shows us that the flux is the magnetic field strength times the area that is being measured. And in your data booklet, you've also got cos theta, that is if you have an area like this and the magnetic field is not going through it at 90 degrees. Obviously, if it's 90 degrees, then cos theta is 1, so it's just flux is BA. But if it's not, then if there is an angle theta to go through, then we use cos theta there. So if it's perpendicular if the field lines are going through the plane perpendicular to the plane of that area that's being measured then cos theta theta is zero so cos theta is one so there is flux is ba however if there is a slightly bigger angle there then we use cos theta. So that's our first equation in our data booklet and it says that magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic field strength 
multiplied by the area that is that that magnetic field is going through that's passing through times cos theta where theta is the angle from the normal to the plane that's being measured now when we talk about this stuff generally the area that we're talking about is the area inside of a loop of wire so if we have one loop of wire there then and the magnetic field is coming through it like this then the the flux that is penetrating that magnetic field can be given by flux is ba however often when we're using flux to generate electricity then we have not just one coil of wire but we have many 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 coils of wire in a in a continuous coil like that so many turns in a coil of wire now that forms lots of different areas and all these areas are the same provided the radius of the coil stays the same so what we can do is we can take flux is b a cos theta i'm going to put the cos theta in brackets because in this in this particular example cos theta is just one and then we have the number of turns which is n so whatever our flux traveling through this entire system is is b a n cos theta now that isn't just called flux that is called flux linkage and flux linkage is sometimes given the symbol lambda so flux linkage is the flux times the number of turns so flux linkage is the flux times the number of turns so all of that will give you tools to calculate the flux or the flux linkage and that is what we're going to use to calculate an induced EMF. Now just to finish this video I wanted to show you a little example that shows you about the relationship between flux density and flux linkage sorry flux density and magnetic field strength. So I have a magnet here and this is some uh, iron filings, very fine iron filings, iron powder. And so if I put the magnet near the iron, you can see that the areas where, it's a bit more obvious if I move the magnet slightly so you can see them moving, but the areas where the field strength is strongest, i.e. Where the, where the iron is moving the most, those areas are the areas closest to the poles of the magnets. And from our magnetic field lines diagram, we know that that is the area where the magnetic field lines are closest together. So you can see wherever the lines are closest together, the field strength is strongest. So magnetic flux density is equivalent to magnetic field strength. This was a Love at Physics video about flux, flux density and flux linkage. If you have any questions, please do comment on the video. And if you like uh, the video and you want to see more, please subscribe. Thanks.